one hash function to rule them all. Hash functions. How to write a custom hash function and why you should. What does a hash function do? Consider the following. Take the English dictionary. The contents are stored alphabetically. They are organized. If we were to attempt to insert these organized results into a data structure, the result would be that they would group in a limited number of nodes. This is equally true for an unbalanced tree as it is for a hash table with a bad hash function. The purpose of a hash function is to distribute our data equally across our entire data structure. Its actual purpose is to make our data messier or distributed. If you've seen an implementation of a hash function, it might have been confusing. It's kind of hard actually to understand what a simple piece of code like the one on the screen now is doing and how it works. There is actually an algebraic principle at play here. And what looks like a simple loop that's adding and multiplying numbers is actually applied mathematics at work. So let's break down exactly what's happening here. A hash function, in this case, is actually just a change of base from the number base represented by our magic number. And the loop you see, well, that's just implementing this change of base. Let's look at how this works. Take a string or a set of characters. Each of these characters can be represented by a hexadecimal digit. Each of these hexadecimal digits can be considered to be part of a number that is base our magic number. In this example, we're using hexadecimal 87 as our number base. The hash function is simply aggregating these digits, which we consider to be hexadecimal base 87, into a single hexadecimal number. This process is simple. To rectify a malformed digit, we multiply it by our base. This moves it to the right. We, of course, combine it with the existing digit in that column. We repeat this until we are left with one properly formed number. The result of our hash function is some reduced form of this number in this example. This process naturally truncates as it accumulates and exceeds the integer size of the computer. This is what is actually happening, what that simple piece of code is doing, and why it works. It's a simple piece of code, and this adds to its beauty. Once we understand the mathematical principle behind it, it actually makes sense. However, at its heart, the mathematical complexity is constant. Not to be confused with computational complexity. Well, that's constant too. All that being said, it might not be the best hash function for what we're doing. How can we expand on this principle? It's easy. We can use a higher order complexity mathematically. Instead of converting from base 87 hexadecimal, let's convert from a polynomial cubic base with the coefficients 87, 99, 17, 9. Let's go over an example of how to do this. We start with our string, our characters as hexadecimal digits, and we begin to convert from our polynomial number base to a standard hexadecimal number. I have some other videos that go into detail what's happening here and why it works. It is quite fascinating, and I love using mathematics, specifically algebra, in this way. That is one iteration of our hash. What we've accomplished here is we've essentially generalized this principle across all polynomial number bases. This is incredibly important 
as we can encapsulate all polynomial hash functions into a single routine. One hash function to rule them all. We can input our polynomial base. We can control for entropy and runtime. And we can tune our hash function exactly to what our data set indicates operates best. We can use machine learning to further optimize our results. I've implemented this in an open source project called Template Hash. It's available on GitHub. You can see that in less than 100 lines, including comments, we've implemented this general hash function. The test suite is configured to output information about different hash algorithms that are run from this general function. It outputs information about their distribution and runtime. There is a lot of work left to do here, building out the tool that allows us to ask the question, what is the absolute best hash function for my data set and my entropy and runtime requirements? To summarize, a hash function converts a variable length and potentially uniform data set into a fixed length distributed one. It is a one-way function and cannot be reliably undone. Although it is very interesting to note that there is a relationship between a hash function like this and an arithmetic encoder, the change of base can also be utilized, if utilized properly, as a lossless compression function. There are techniques of reversing a hash like the one we've implemented, which is why it's not a reliable cryptographic hash. I've actually implemented a compression engine that does this, and it works rather impressively like you'd expect a good quality arithmetic encoder to function. Moving on, hash functions are an important part of many data structures. Tuning a hash function to match our needed entropy, speed, and distribution requirements of a custom data set can reliably increase performance of critical data structures. We are addicted to using general purpose systems and not tuned ones. There is a huge benefit here in many cases. And finally, I'll reiterate, we should not confuse any of the contents of this video with cryptographic hash functions, which have more strict guarantees and different applications 